Welcome to the Scottish Parliament. For the last five months, the Education and Culture Committee have been examining the uh, British Sign Language Scotland Bill. Um, today we're publishing a report into the general principles of the bill. And I'm very pleased to say that the, the committee unanimously supports the principles of the BSL Scotland Bill. We now hope to get the Parliament to agree uh, and vote and support those bill proposals um, quite soon. Uh, obviously, we're also going to um, then go on and examine the bill at stage two and stage three. So there's still a lot of work to do with the bill. One of the things that uh, I think is the most important parts of the process that we undertook was to explain that while the bill has the intention of prioritising and promoting uh, BSL, it doesn't actually place any obligations on service users and local authorities and other public bodies. Uh, the intention is, of course, to ensure that they publish plans and that they make proper uh, proposals for how they support BSL users across the country. But today we publish a report um, and I'm delighted that you've come along to the Parliament uh, to hear about the bill and also to hopefully ask me some questions about what the committee thought uh, about the bill and its processes. Okay. So the BSL bill, how is that going to improve services for deaf and deaf blind people who, who use BSL? I think it's a very good question because this is one of the things that the committee struggled with uh, to try and understand what the impact um, if the bill was passed would be uh, because the bill doesn't actually um, uh, lay any obligations on uh, public services but what it does do is it will do a number of things it will establish a planning framework to ensure that uh, not only is there a, a national plan provided by the Scottish Government but also public authorities national health service local authorities for example will publish local plans about, about what they will do to ensure that services meet the needs of deaf and deafblind uh, members of the community. Uh, as we say in our report, uh, what's important here is that, the, is that the plans that are published actually deliver improvements for deaf and deafblind members of the community. Um, although the, the main thrust of the bill is to increase the profile of BSL users a bit like the Gaelic, Gaelic Language Bill did, it's important that that has an actual uh, practical impact on services across the country. We have to see progress and of course again one of the most important things is that there is a review element within the bill to ensure that once those plans are published uh, we see if they're having an impact and they are properly reviewed to ensure that actual progress is being made in delivering important and uh, the needed services uh, across the public sector. So a lot of work should come out from a successful implementation of the bill, but obviously we have to make sure that the plans are published are not just a, 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 a box ticking exercise, but actually make a practical difference to the deaf and deaf blind community of Scotland. Okay, so, so the local service providers, um, um, when they have to provide services to deaf and deaf blind people, what if the quality isn't as it should be? How can deaf people get involved to, to make that highlighted? I, I think this is one of the most important things. One of the recommendations that we've made um, to try and improve the bill, because the bill is only at stage one at the moment. Uh, there are um, several amending stages to go. Um, we want to change the bill to ensure that, for example, the BSL plans that will be published by public bodies must be published in BSL. At the moment, the bill doesn't say that. I think it was critical that uh, all the plans are published in BSL. I think it's also absolutely critical that uh, local BSL users, deaf and deafblind users across the country, are able to contribute to the consultation process in delivering the plans. And so we want to make sure that, given the fact that it's critical that users get to get, get involved in the consultation process and get involved in giving their opinions to local authorities and national health service boards, then the BSL plans uh, must be published in BSL. That's, the, I think, one of the most critical points. I think, secondly, we certainly support very strongly uh, the Scottish Government's proposal to establish an advisory board. Um, the advisory board is very important, I think, in making sure the government is on the right track in terms of the national plan 
and the work below that of the local plants. And I think what's most important about that advisory board is that it's made up of many contributors from the deaf and the deaf blind community themselves. It can't be an advisory board made up of um, officials and civil servants and representatives. It must have actual members of the deaf and deaf blind community on that advisory group. Uh, if that's the case, then I think we'll get right to the heart of the problem. And those individuals will be able to give real life experience to that advisory group that will influence the plan. And because of that, I think that's how we'll get uh, the real opinions of deaf and deaf blind people across Scotland right to the heart of the service provision, which at the moment isn't really providing the kind of services that uh, uh, deaf and deaf blind people need. Yeah, this thing's very positive and very encouraging and hopefully the BSL bill will go through um, the, the various stages and be successful in being passed. Well, we hope so. We've, we've spent, as I said, the last five months examining the bill. Um, we understand that it's about uh, prioritising services and it's also about profile. Um, but we hope that the fact that this is done will have a positive and practical impact on the actual service delivery across the country. I think I'd like to say just in conclusion, if you don't mind, uh, can I thank you first of all for coming along to the Parliament today. I think it's very important that the community is involved uh, not only at the start of the process but right through the process um, and also once the bill hopefully is passed, right involved and as I said a moment ago in making sure the plans are actually uh, practical and deliverable uh, for the community. Uh, our report can be read on the Scottish Parliament's website and as I said earlier as well, we will of course continue to publish uh, our documents in BSL uh, to do with the BSL bill so that the, the deaf and deaf blind community have immediate access to the work that's going on here by the Education and Culture Committee on the British Sign Language Bill. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.